Hello friends, followers and channel members. Welcome to a quick video today here in Microsoft Flight Simulator where we're going to be having a look at hot weather operations in the Airbus A320. Giving you tips on how to keep your passengers happy as well as of course looking after your aircraft. Now at the time of filming this video here in the UK we're looking at record breaking temperatures, temperatures of above 35 degrees C but for many parts of the world this is the norm so these uh, procedures are applied the world over in hot countries but it's something that European airline uh, pilots perhaps don't have to think about all too often. We can of course replicate these procedures here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in particular if you're flying on the Phoenix A320 at the time this video is being made then some of these procedures are in fact really useful. There are also, as you will see a little bit later on, procedures that we can use only in the latest versions of the A320, that is of course the Neo. So let's start by taking a look at what we can do on the ground to try and increase passengers comfort in the really hot temperatures. As a good base mark, any temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius is probably the time when you really want to start thinking about passenger comfort and looking after your aircraft. Currently outside today where I am sat on the ground at Cairo Airport, it's showing an indicated temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. So yeah, this is the perfect opportunity to show some of these hot weather procedures. Number one really is as simple as it gets. Once all the passengers are on board and catering etc, get those doors closed. Air conditioning packs in the aircraft will obviously be supplying the cabin with nice cool fresh air and you don't want those doors open because that all that cold air that's getting pumped in will just be headed straight back out again. It's essentially the same reason why you don't drive your car with air conditioning on and have the windows down at the same time. The two work against themselves so it becomes rather pointless. Number two is even if you have your aircraft powered by the APU if you're still on stand switch that GPU on and get the external power connected doing this reduces the load on the APU and this is actually simulated in the sim as well so here on the Phoenix you can see as I toggle the external power on you can see the load on the APU dropping Next, be sure that you set your air conditioning temperatures to something sensible. By default, these are set actually quite high in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you can see we've obviously got the cockpit, we've got the forward cabin, we've got the aft cabin. You can obviously reduce these to something much more comfortable. In hot temperatures as well, you can also put the pack flow to high. Now, when the APU is supplying the packs, this is by default automatically high. But as soon as the engines are supplying the air conditioning packs, then by default the airflow would be set to norm so that's why we can set it to high during hot temperatures normally what would happen of course is that you would set your pack flow to low if your passenger numbers were below 115 and then normal of course COVID has changed this so normal is always the way forward unless of course we're doing these high temperature operations so that's on the ground before departure but what about after you've landed if you've landed obviously somewhere with a really hot outside air temperature one thing lots of pilots do do is to leave flaps one configuration set once you've pulled onto the stand this is actually to reduce the risk of an erroneous and spurious warning that you get on the ecam telling you that you have a wing leak this is with respects to fuel this warning is also a non-dispatch item so pretty critical during a turnaround flight for example because you don't want to be at your destination and then suddenly stuck there that you can't return this procedure is only usually applied on transit stops so or turnaround flights so if it's the last flight of the day this isn't as important after you have landed, you should always check your brake temperatures and of course in hot climate on perhaps a short runway where you've needed quite a lot of braking pressure, then there's a chance that your brakes are going to be quite warm and in that case you'll perhaps consider turning on the brake fans if your aircraft happens to be equipped with them. 
Now, there are some caveats to this. You're not allowed to depart if your brake temperatures are over 300 degrees C. That is until, of course, you've turned on the braking fans. If you have turned on your brake fans, then you have to wait until your brake temperatures are below 150 degrees C, which might not make sense at first. But the reason for that is when you turn on the brake fans, you're actually blowing cold air onto the temperature sensor as well. So it's actually giving you a false reading. So what may seem like a temperature below 300 degrees C, so you think, great, we're good to go, actually may not not be below 300 degrees C because you're blowing cold air onto the uh, onto the sensor. So to mitigate this, Airbus say you need to have your temperatures at below 150 degrees C indicated after using the brake fans just to be doubly sure. If your brake temperatures are above 500 degrees C, Airbus also stipulate that it is not a good idea to use the parking brake, so use chocks where possible. Finally then, here's a little quirk of the Neo aircraft and something you can do which is just to increase passenger comfort during these hot temperatures. Normally, as you have seen from our live streams and uh, standard operating procedures, we would always start engine number one first. However, there is a known procedure whereby if the temperature is excessively warm, then you can actually start engine number two first and allow that to power the packs and not the AP you which means that when you go ahead and start engine one the bleed air to the packs isn't interrupted so the cabin gets warm for a little bit while engine one starts the method of doing this is rather simple you start engine two and wait until idle is reached shown by the avail indication after doing this go onto the overhead and close the cross bleed valve Doing this ensures that the pack 2 control valve will automatically open. Then you can go ahead and start engine 1. Once engine 1 has reached idle and again shown by the avail indication, you can go back up to the cross bleed and set that back to auto. After this, everything else is as a normal engine start procedure. So that then is pretty much it for flying in hot temperatures in the Airbus A320. Let me know guys if you have found this video useful and of course one of the things that we can't mitigate against is the fact that when we are a Microsoft Flight Simulator, I don't know about you, but my room temperature increases dramatically thanks to the work of the PC and the GPU. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have then please do hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and turn on that notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and live content. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.